This morning we're going to continue our teachings on staying long enough in the Sata for certain things to happen in your life. The 25th reason why you need to go and spend time with God in prayer is for you to know your covenant rights in Christ. I'm again going to repeat what I said last week and you heard Brother Stephen earlier in his testimony said, you cannot defeat Goliath with your mouth shut. Some people speak a lot of nonsense and never get anything happening in their life. Some others are men of few words. When they speak, certain things happen. Now you must know when to speak what. Remember what we were looking at last week. I shared with you about how the Lord led me to study about Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan. Some of you who went here would like to know that it's important you understand what is the Sihon spirit and what is the Og spirit. The Sihon spirit will stop you from passing through to the place where God wants you to be. It is a spirit of opposition. The Og spirit is a different form of a spirit. It is a huge spirit. A spirit of intimidation. You are moving ahead when you are faced with this prospect of how big this situation is. How big this problem is. How am I going to handle it? So I want you to write these two things down. One is an outright spirit. Sihon is an unclean spirit of conflict, fight. That stands up against you to stop you from entering your Canaan. It doesn't want you to pass, stops you, an unclean spirit. Og is a spirit of intimidation. You'll read about these two characters in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and chapter 3. I want you to study it. I want you to see how important it is for us to pay attention to what the Lord is teaching us about these two men. Because these two men represent two kinds of spirit. But if you notice very carefully, both men who represent two kinds of spirit must be handled with conflict. Not with ambassage of peace. You can't come and say, let's have peace. No, there isn't any peace with the spirit of Sihon. There isn't any peace with the spirit of Og. Can I have an Amen? These are unclean spirits. You must deal with unclean spirits. You mustn't play with unclean spirits because unclean spirits are unclean. Their very aim and work is to stop you from possessing your possessions. And I want you to write it down, please. That phrase, possessing your possessions. Possessing your possessions is an important phrase for you to pay attention to. Why? Because if you don't understand how possessing your possessions works, you will end up not having the fullest God-intended 
blessing God wants you to have. You will think it's not mine because somebody else is right now exercising dominion. Please write. Somebody else is exercising the dominion. Somebody else is bringing you into subjection. What legally is yours is in somebody else's hands. And this is a conflict, believe me. As a Christian believer, someday in your life you'll have to face. You cannot escape it. This was not a conflict that Moses faced. This was not a conflict that Joshua faced. This was a conflict entire Israel faced. And I want you to write that down please. This is a conflict that the entire church at some point of time will face. Entire Israel faced these two unclean spirits. Remember the scripture tells us whatever you find in the Bible especially about Israel has a parallel with the church. The church will have to face that kind of a situation where you will see this unclean spirit standing up against you. Don't let an unclean spirit dominate your life to the extent in which you sit and think God is bad. God isn't bad. The command he gave to Moses was begin to possess your possessions. Enter into conflict. Contend. Write it down please. Contend. It's amazing that God would want them to fight. Especially when we think. Well God is a God of peace. So how does God relate peace to conflict? When it comes to the Christian believer, you can only overcome with conflict. Because there are certain demons that stand in your path. You just heard a testimony about how this airline pilot said, I can't enter this kind of a cloud when there is such lightning and electricity all over the place. Now what do you do? To tell you the truth, some will prepare for death. Because they haven't prepared for death earlier. Some will break out into a sweat. Some will th start throwing up. As a Christian believer, whose future is already settled through the blood of the Lamb. What do you do is the question. You declare a way where there seems to be no way. Or else you will pay the price for that. Sounds strange to you, but it isn't strange. If you read, I think, one of the Pastor Benny Hinn's books, he met with a plane accident. One of Archbishop Benzenedo Hosa's books, again the same conflict. What do you do? Well, you can't fight your Goliath with your mouth shut. That's why we shouldn't be slack when we use words. We must be focused when we use words. Because there is an unclean spirit wanting to destroy your life, stop you short. To prove God wrong. I mean, the attack is not against you. The attack is against the character of God. The God who said, you can be blessed, you can prosper, you can be in good health. That God's character is being attacked by this unclean spirit, the Sihon spirit, by attacking you. Because you are the object of God's spe special attention. So attack the man. Attack the woman. Attack the child. So entire Israel had to face the Sihon spirit as well as the Og spirit. Both are unclean spirits. And if you didn't know it, you will read in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and chapter 3, 
about the obstinate, hard-hearted spirit of Sihon. Hard. Somehow when you speak to the person, the person doesn't listen. The person is not able to see God has a plan for your life. God has a call on your life. God wants you to go through him into something better. A land flowing with milk and honey where rain from heaven would water the ground. You are not going to live depending on river Nile. Can I have an amen? You are not going to be depending on river Nile. You are going to be depending on a God who cares for you, loves you, wants you in something better. So the unclean spirit will fight you. For some it will be like a rain cloud. For some it will look like lightning. If you read the life of Oral Roberts, you will read about how his mummy was called because in those days, pastor's wives served as midwives. They had to assist in any of the childbirths that would happen in the American households simply by virtue of them being the pastor's wife. So his mummy was called one night and he, she had to pass through a lonely stretch of a field. And she was pregnant and heavy with brother old Roberts in her belly. And it was a terrifying sight. Empty field stretching. Darkness only to be brightened with the lightnings from heaven. And as she was crossing the field. She was frightened. She was a young mother herself. Had an older brother and a sister before him. And she was heavy with pregnancy. Going to assist a lady who was in childbirth. When her dress got caught on the fence wire. And he said she was so terrified. She didn't know what to do. It was like something was fighting her from every side. And then she prayed a prayer of committal and said, If you let me have this pregnancy, and it will be a pregnancy that will be normal, and I will have this child and not get destroyed in this terrible darkness and lightning, then this child will serve you all the days of his life. Can I have an amen from this church? You must know what words you speak. And God heard that prayer. And he was born a stammerer. He stammered almost all of his early life. But today the way we see him is not as a stammerer. In the body of Christ we see him as one of the most anointed men of God. Whom God chose to use. And still uses to inspire preachers all over the world. Carried the healing anointing of God much more than any single man has in his lifetime and in his generation. You can't defeat Goliath with your mouth shut. You must know. You can't go and sit and talk peace with the devil. There isn't any peace with him. Even if you have made a mistake, there is no peace with the devil. There is no peace with an Amalekite. There is no peace with the spirit of Sihon or with the spirit of Og. Both are unclean spirits. They are out to intimidate you. Look at the spirit of Og. I told you how big his bed was. He was not sleeping with his entire family on a bed like that. He was sleeping on that bed himself. (laughs) I just wanted to see how it felt to be tall. So I climbed over the pantry and I looked over <laughs> and I wanted to see how it was from the other side. Everything is dwarfed before a tall man. But the people before him are even more intimidated. He looks double the real size that he is. Why? Because words of men have so painted a picture in our hearts that we think they're invincible. The spirit of Og is invincible. The good news is, there is no name above the name of Jesus. Can I have an amen? There is no name above the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, including the spirit of Og. 
including the spirit of all and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord not the spirit of all the spirit of all cannot be Lord Lordship cannot be exercised by an unclean spirit in the presence of the name above all names so you will prevail you will prevail that's why I told you that all this happens when you spend time with God it will not happen simply you won't find tumors disappearing simply you look at pe people are too busy for prayer you're just looking at the person's future people hate you for saying that but that's it, the truth that's the person's future because when they call according to the book of Proverbs instead of hearing a voice say here am I they'll hear a laugh they say God don't you care again a laugh this is not a wicked laugh this is a holy laugh and the answer from heaven is when I called you didn't answer so when your fears come upon you you will get no answer from me of course we don't like to think about it like that we think God is there all the time my friends let me put it like this he is there all the time but you don't see him all the time at work when you neglect to acknowledge that he's there all the time how do I acknowledge God is there all the time when I spend time with God the separated walk is not known till you actually go through separation when you actually go through separation you will see what that separated walk is all about it's now you and the Lord fellowshipping together now no longer swaggeth means anything to you no longer does the airline magazine namaskar mean anything to you it's the word which means everything to you one and a half hours on the flight no better time to spend in God's word and meditating on his goodness worshipping him praising his name I mean it is a sanitized time when you can sit and listen to the goodness of God speak to you things that you never heard before and it has to do sometimes it has to do with travel you travel one hour in the bus some will choose to sleep some will choose to listen to the word it all depends on what choices we make yesterday there was a man who was speaking on television he said I never knew that my foolishness and the choices I made would land me in one of the biggest messes that I ever got myself into as a man walking the streets of Hong Kong as a backpacker he ran out of money saw another man talk good act good live it up so he went and asked him how do you make it he said I'm a tour operator but I also do something would you like to know he said yes I'd like to know about what you do how do you always have money in Hong Kong here we're running low on money he was an Englishman so by a strange turn of events he along with three others joined together to smuggle gold into Nepal do you know why somebody told him in Hong Kong in Nepal airports there is no metal detector I mean can you believe the crazy stuff you hear people believe and operate on and these four men joined together and smuggled the biggest volume of gold on their person that they have ever carried into Nepal 112 kgs of gold and he said he was standing there waiting to see their usual contact at the customs but instead of that there was a woman in a pink sari and she called him come I mean you must listen to know why 
choices if they're made wrongly will land you in a lot of mess so the first man went he cleared second man went he cleared this fellow started shivering he didn't know what was happening all of a sudden a man his voice was heard loudly because the third person cleared and he was the last to clear this woman the loud voice and all of a sudden he said he heard the metal detector go off like a car siren <laughs> and the, they were playing that side by side and he winced to even listen to that he ended up spending time in a jail in nepal because the gold was being smuggled from hong kong to nepal and ultimately into india 1.6 million dollars worth of gold and they were doing it for 2000 dollars i mean if one fellow ran away with that entire supply of gold he would have made it rich sometimes when we say things out most people don't understand it but today he is the wiser of what actually he should have enjoyed he said i could have just written home and asked for some money and they would have sent me the money i didn't have to do something crazy and stupid like this follow when you see something standing up against you to stop you from entering your promised canaan it can be in health it can be in wealth it can be in prosperity it can be in wholesomeness don't take things lying down don't take things lying down you must wage war how you can go and tap the glass of a man's hands who's drinking but you can bend your knees more before the lord in prayer and then stand and command that unclean spirit of drinking and the power of drinking to be broken now look at david please First Samuel chapter 17 is an amazing portion of scripture it always is For 40 days Goliath made his sales pitch What was his sales pitch Send me one man who can defeat me Can I have an amen Send me one man who can defeat me If I am defeated then we'll serve you if you are defeated or your man is defeated then you become our slaves now i want to show you something here please even in this place you see the spirit of og and you see the spirit of sihon first samuel chapter 17 Verse three, and the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. However, you look at it, the man was not less than ten feet tall. There are two ways of calculating his height. Some say he is eleven and a half feet. some say they were he must have been 13 and a half feet whatever you think about it or however you think about it the man was bigger than this ceiling so we were standing here half is or at least three fourth of his body would be inside and his head would be outside mighty intimidating especially for a young teenager 
Look at his, at his qualifications. He had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. Now what was the thing that is intimidating is this. The man was so huge. That there was an unclean spirit in operation in this man. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. I want you to mark that down please. His was not just a challenge to Saul. His was a cry to the armies of Israel and said unto them. Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be your servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Now that's what the spirit of Og does. Intimidate. Personal intimidation after speaking collectively. Give me a man. Because Goliath is a spirit by itself. It's a speaking spirit. But in the midst of speaking, you must see the key to overcoming. Very rarely do people see the key to overcoming. God at times let fools speak. So his splendor of wisdom will manifest. What this man was speaking was incidentally subservience of an entire army of Philistines to the army of God. Army of covenant would rule over an army that wasn't in covenant with God by the words of this one man. I mean if he had only said I'll fight with the man. If you win well, let's call it a day and let's go back to our places of stay. We won't interfere with you. You don't interfere with us. He didn't say that. He spoke about serving. He spoke about coming into subjection. He spoke about lordship. And that's what frightened an entire nation of fighting men that day. And every single day for 40 days. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. You will hear a lot of things, but what you say is what you'll get. Everybody says a lot of things, but what you say is what you'll get. In fact, you're sitting in a miracle because of someone believing that you will get what we say. Everyone said you won't get a place. We said no, we will get a place. You must know that what you say is what you will get. Not what they say. Jesus wasn't bothered about what people said of him. He looked at Peter and said, what do you say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? Now, David was the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. The three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, the next unto him, Aminadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest and the three eldest followed Saul. 
continuously you see something being mentioned there. And I want you to write this down, please, because we are learning something new this morning. Whom you follow matters. These men followed a man who was backslidden. So when the spirit of Goliath began to challenge, the spirit of Saul was intimidated, fearful. Subsequently, all the three sons of Jesse were fearful. They were actually fighting men, but you follow the scriptures how it says, and they followed Saul. They followed Saul. They followed a man who didn't have any relationship with God. You will always find men and women like this. Don't follow them. Because in time of crisis... They will have no answer to give. They will not be there when it matters to speak right and to get the victory. These men followed Saul. Somehow, David never followed Saul. He followed a God who said he was a man according to my heart's desire. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. Look at verse 15. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. He returned to feed his father's sheep. Mark that down please. Returned to feed his father's sheep. Returned to the place where Seth living made it possible to talk right. He didn't feed his father's sheep in his father's house. It is obvious he took his father's sheep into the pastures where sheep would have good grass. Loneliness. Without Christ is hell. But when you come alone to be with him, makes you invincible. You look at some people who spend a lot of time in prayer. When they speak, you sense an anointing when they speak. Why? They are already natural flesh and blood men. If you poke them, they are not going to get blue blood coming out of their veins. Their blood is red. They are flesh and blood people. You pinch them, they wince in pain. But when they speak, because they have spent time with God, it's God speaking through them. He returned to his father's house to feed his father's sheep. He didn't return to his father's house to lie in bed and sleep. Remember, slothfulness is an unclean spirit. When you hate it, you will see blessing in your life far more than you know. Where others are lacking, you will win. Where others are saying there is a lion on the streets, you will not say so. You will say there are customers on the streets. There's business on the streets. When others are saying it's a cold day, you will be saying this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will have what God says we can have. We will do what God says we can do. And we will be what God's word says we can be. I mean, your conversation itself is so different when the spirit of sloth is bound. 
Now this man went back to work. I want you to write that down. Feeding father's sheep was work. But it was also a work that separated him from the father's household in the natural that he could be alone with God in the spiritual. And just he said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an eva of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. Carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Do you know something? An entire nation was willing to fight an entire army. When all that Goliath was saying is fight me. So what was the shout we were hearing? It wasn't the shout of battle. It was the cry of fear. Forty days, an entire fighting army is crying out. We are ready to fight. Oh, we are coming. Then all of a sudden one man steps out from the ranks of the Philistines. He is huge. And all Israel covers in fear. I mean, why couldn't an entire nation of people just jump this fellow? Take him out. Sure, one or two Israelites may have got killed. But he was not invincible. Somehow, they believed he was invincible. Why? Because they were already following a man who never had a walk with God. Saul would rather sit in his tent than be on his knees. Can I have an amen from this church? Some will rather sit in a place of work but never go down on their knees to pray. They know nothing of prayer. They know nothing of supplication. I want you to mark this down please. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army, and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion. I want you to mark that word champion. Champion. The Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Now you see the reaction when a man walks with God. He never changed his words. Forty days, he was like a broken record going over and over what he had said. Forty days, he was an ex- Excellent presenter of himself. Sometimes I tell people, going out the first time to take up a job, remember one thing when you go, you are your best salesman. Don't sit and say, I can't do it. You must be able to say, I can do it. Are you lying? No. No. You're just saying nothing intimidates you. With a little bit of effort, I can do it. With a little bit of extra learning, I can do it. I can make it. Because you are your best salesman. Even if somebody is recommending you to the post. I mean, I've seen people who have been recommended by others who go and flop in interviews. All because they couldn't even present themselves right. They couldn't speak about themselves. They had nothing to talk to the ones who asked them questions.
Look at this please. David heard them. And all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him. And were so afraid. It looks like while all Israel ran, there was one boy standing there wondering where are the others. Where are the others? And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Faith is not based on what you see. Faith is based on the character of the one whom you believe in. Have you seen this man? For some people seeing is enough intimidation. They don't even enter into conflict. Just by seeing. Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him. What were they? Women? I don't hear you. What were they? They were saying that they were men. All of a sudden. There isn't any spunk in any one of them to handle this wretched man who was defying God. Don't let anyone do it in your lifetime. That person is not worthy to live. Can I have an amen from this church? Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. They can belong to any kind of a group of people. If they stand up and have sworn themselves to destroying the gospel in their lifetime, then it's up to us to take them out through prayer and to see that the gospel is preached in our lifetime. Look at what they were saying. And the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Every one of these things normally motivates people. That when you're following a wrong person and an unclean spirit is dominating your life, none of this is motivation. Riches, high position, you'll get married to the king's daughter. Someone must have said she looks ugly, I don't want to get married to her. They said, no, listen, not that particular one, this one. This is the one you're going to get married. You know how fighting men are. Someone said, forget me. I don't want to even think of marriage. I'll rather be a bachelor and live than become a married man and die even before my marriage day. <laughs> I will give him his daughter. Or I will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Tax free. No need to pay taxes. Forget about 31st July. No e-filing of anything. You're free. No one. Now listen to the man who heard the word speak. Let him speak to you this morning. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? He wants a confirmation again. <laughs> he's already decided he's going to kill. He's not saying let me go pray. 30 days fasting and prayer. I'll come back. I'll decide then. When you spend time with God, people will think you're cocky. People will think you're arrogant. They don't know. Set the living is preparation already done. Not again only I will go prepare. That's the condition of the five foolish virgins who never had oil in their lamps. <laughs> When the bridegroom come, we'll go to buy. That's because they doubt that the bridegroom will come. Not you and me. Can I have an amen? We don't doubt he's coming. 
We don't doubt that he is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We don't doubt anything that the Bible tells us New Jerusalem is. We don't doubt it. We prepare for it. That's why prayerful preparation in private prevents poor performance in public. He never uttered a word of prayer. Because he all along knew, this man, I'm going to kill him. So he wants them to tell him again what is going to be the bonus. What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? He's calling the man a reproach. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? My. That he should defy the armies of the living God. Now I wrote about it in our newsletter. And I want you to see something here please. Four significant statements. He first said, You may look at me and I may look like a young boy. But remember I am a man on the inside. I am man enough to kill this Philistine. Number one, man. That's what Philist, the Philistine wanted. Later when he looked at David, he got actually angry with the Israelites. He thought they were mocking him, sending him a young fellow to fight with him. He didn't know. David may have looked young on the outside, but he was a qualified man on the inside to take on the enemy. Remember whom God calls, he qualifies. Don't make a wrong judgment by looking at the outer man. You're sadly mistaken. Man that killed this Philistine, verse 26. Put number 1, 2, 3, 4 please. Number 2, he called Goliath a reproach. Number three, he said uncircumcised Philistine, a man with no covenant, right to live. And number four, that he should defy the armies of the living God. One, two, three, four. Most amazingly, throughout he never even mentioned the word Goliath. The name of the, 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 the meaning of the word Goliath means a predictor of events. A predictor of events. David never lost sight of Israel as a man who had a changed personality. A cunning man whose personality was changed and became a prince who prevailed with God. Remember Jacob? His name was changed to Israel. So David would Call Israel, Israel. Covenant people. People with relationship with God. But who will prevail with God in prayer. Prevailing strength. Instead of saying David versus Goliath. He was saying. A prince who has power with God and with men. And has prevailed against the reproach. I mean, when you talk, you must know what to talk. Sometimes, when adults do the talking, they'll even send immature children out of the room. Why? Because they'll say, if they hear and speak one thing wrong, everything will go wrong. He was a man who knew what he was saying. uncircumcised Philistine. He was looking into an area which most people don't look into. 
And I want you to write it down because we are talking about a holy place. In the Old Testament, God intended for men to be circumcised as a sign of the Old Covenant so that the origin of the place of productivity would be brought into subjection to a living God. That's why God intended for the male to be circumcised. It would be in the most private place, but it would also be a place of high respect to God. Because from that place would, would there be an originating of the next race, the next generation, the future. This man had no relationship with God in the most private part of his life. That's how it is with most people who challenge the Christian believer. In their private times, they never have a relationship with God. They're always declaring it is our hard work that made it. We are what we are because we are self-made men. In fact, they're against anyone who challenges their thought patterns with the word of God. Some of them will outright tell you, we don't believe in all this. Well, you've got to believe. That if you want to defeat Goliath, you better have a private life of prayer. And it should be solid. Remember, you will not get a chance to sometimes have a second chance. For David, that was the day he had to meet Goliath. It was the day that God had ordained that this fellow would de defeat Goliath. But it was also a day that God had ordained that he would get the glory. Number four. I wrote, the church needs more than ever men and women and children who know and understand and successively use new covenant talk more than anything else against the lies of the devil. Know and speak daily aloud what the Bible tells you you are in Christ. To know more about that, you will have to spend more time reading the New Testament epistles that teach you about who you are in Christ and what you have in Him. Some people always read the book of Psalms. They never turn to the letters of Paul or Peter or James or John. There's nothing wrong in reading the book of Psalms. But you are not an old covenant man any longer. You are a new covenant creation. You have new rights and privileges that the Old Testament people lacked. Now follow. Blood talk will always win over flesh talk. Positive confession that lacks confession about the power of the blood of Jesus over sin, sickness, the curse and demons is very limited in its effectiveness over the wily darts of the enemy. Every day speak what God's word tells you to be. Read Isaiah 53 over and over again. Some will religiously follow what a medical man tells them but will fail to even confess God's word from Isaiah 53 three times a day it's not because they lack understanding it's because they don't know the depths of the goodness of God when you grab a hold of his word and say God fulfill your word in my life let that bring glory and honor to you Look at the final statement of David. He declared that the armies of the living God would live whereas the Philistine and all his race would be destroyed. 
Today you don't find one man who says, I am a descendant of a Philistine. You find people who identify with the star of David more than anything else in our lifetime. Because there are descendants of David still around. We'll come back to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I believe there's more there than we have ever seen. God willing, next week. That if you stay long enough to know your covenant rights in Christ, you will not be put to shame. You will not live a life of defeat. Don't sit and measure your life with people who have no prayer life. Don't do it. Don't say, I know sister so and so, she never spends time in prayer. But all the time she's going here and she's going there and she even does ministry. Listen, doing ministry is one thing. Killing Goliaths is quite another thing. None of the people who were standing that day was, were table servers. They were all soldiers. They were also doing something, following Saul into battle. And only one man had the unction in him to get the job done. Be that man. Be that woman. Again I'm repeating, there was only one person there that day who had the unction to get the job done. You be that person in your lifetime. Can I have an amen? A louder amen. Pay the price right and see the blessing manifest on time in your life. I want you to spend time in prayer because today is a holy day. You separated it for a purpose to pray, to seek the face of God.